One of the most brutal and savage queens ever to rule over England was Mary I, who is famously known as Bloody Mary. She is remembered as being the daughter of King Henry VIII, who inherited the ruthless streak of her father, and she would burn many people at the stake for religious crimes. Mary had a very hard life, and around each corner there was tragedy, health issues, and a sense of trepidation that her reign would bring. She was only on the throne for a short time, a period of roughly five years, but her time would be one in which she made many changes to her country, and Mary would be obstinate in her beliefs and how she ruled over England. She was not very popular, but what are some strange facts you never knew about Bloody Mary I? As always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. One thing to remember is that during the Tudor period, the eldest child of the king or queen would not necessarily come onto the throne and succeed. It was a time in which only men were destined to rule, and despite being the oldest legitimate child of Henry VIII, it was never considered that Mary would become a queen and a monarch herself. She was the oldest child, so nowadays she would have been a queen, and being the first in line to the throne, but Henry VIII did not see her as a future ruler, and he did not necessarily want her as his successor. Mary would, because of this, be rather in the shadows of everyone's mind, but her mother was Catherine of Aragon, Henry's first wife. Despite being the oldest child who survived, she, it was considered, would never rule. One of the strangest episodes in the life of King Henry VIII was when he would shroud his illegitimate son, Henry Fitzroy, Mary's half-brother, in a huge number of titles. Many historians have believed that Fitzroy, the illegitimate son of the king, and his mistress, Bessie Blount, was being prepared to become the successor and heir to the throne, and he was even made a duke. But one of the most shocking proposals put forward by the king was that he wanted to marry Mary, his legitimate eldest daughter, off to his illegitimate son, technically marrying half-sister and half-brother, to strengthen Henry Fitzroy's claims to the throne. This was even accepted by the Pope, who passed special permission for this to take place, but despite going to all this effort, Mary would not marry Fitzroy, as Anne Boleyn, the king's second wife, would have a say in the matter, and she would place Mary Howard, a member of her own family, as the wife of Fitzroy. But Mary could have easily been married to her half-brother. Despite Henry VIII having six wives, it is often overlooked the different effect that these women had on the children of the Tudor king. For example, for Mary being the eldest child, she experienced the influence of each of her father's wives, and she had, because of this, five stepmothers. Each would treat her differently, but this was a huge amount of instability for Mary, and each of the king's wives would bring something different to her household. For example, Jane Seymour is not considered to have been the most educated wife of Henry, and she would champion practical skills, but on the other hand, Catherine Parr, his final and sixth wife, was known to have been a brilliant scholar, who would promote education to Mary, and some of these women were kinder than others. Talking of stepmothers, one of the most severe that Mary had was Anne Boleyn. Anne was a great rival of her mother Catherine of Aragon, and because of this she did not take a great liking to Mary. She saw Mary's position in court as a dangerous one, being the daughter of her great rival, and because of this she would treat her poorly. When Mary was in the care of her governess, alongside her half-sister Princess Elizabeth, the future Elizabeth I, Mary was banned from referring to herself as a princess, and she had to adopt the title of Lady. Mary would refuse to do this, and Anne even issued threats of violence against her stepdaughter, because of this, and it was a shocking thing for a queen to be threatening her stepdaughter. But of course Mary would outlast Anne, and Anne herself had a brutal fall from grace, losing her head inside the Tower of London. One thing that remained throughout Mary's life was her devotion to Catholicism and her religion, even when there was a significant amount of change across England. She was a very strict Catholic, and she would have been heartbroken with her father's changes to the church, and when he dissolved the monasteries, making many Catholic monks homeless. It was a ruthless time, but Henry would begin the outlawing of the Catholic faith, but it was during her half-brother Edward VI's reign, where things got much worse. Mary would pray many times a day, and she regularly received Mass and other Catholic ceremonies. But at the time it would be dangerous to be a Catholic, as many were being persecuted across England. When she came onto the throne, 
it was this religious motivation that led her to punish heretics and religious criminals so severely as she believed she was doing the work of God and that God had told her to do this when she was queen. Her religion and staunch belief caused a lot of bloodshed, upheaval, execution and torture all across England, but Mary believed she was believing in the right religious way. Mary I was not just once, but she was twice written out of the line of succession. The first time occurred when following the separation and annulment of her mother and father's marriage, she would be declared illegitimate and was banned from the line of succession because of this in 1533. This was a great upset to Mary, as she believed one day she could possibly rule, and she would be restored later during the Third Succession Act, as Henry VIII had a change of heart in his final years, and he would be convinced by his sixth wife Catherine Parr to restore Mary. She would be behind Edward VI, the king's son and heir, however he would later try to remove Mary out of the line of succession himself. Edward became terminally ill in 1553, and he would name Lady Jane Grey, one of his cousins, as his successor, rather than Mary, who was technically next in line. The reason Edward did this was because he did not want a Catholic on the throne, who would undo all of his religious changes. Despite many at the time being worried about having a queen on the throne, Mary would lead a military coup to take the throne herself. After hearing of Lady Jane Grey being given the crown, Mary gathered forces in Framlingham and she would then march with them to London to take the crown as she believed it was rightfully hers. She saw Lady Jane Grey as a usurper who had no business in being on the throne and she knew, in law, she was technically the next in line after her brother's death, despite his wishes. Lady Jane Grey was initially supported by the Privy Council, but these advisers would switch their allegiance when Mary's forces marched to London, and with this they proclaimed Mary the Queen. It was a speedy deposition of Lady Jane, who would later meet a brutal fate inside the Tower of London. One of the greatest worries many had across England for Mary's rule is that they could not work out how a woman could lead an army but Mary herself was not actually a bad military commander. She is remembered for her unsuccessful war against the French that led to the loss of Calais, the final piece of France that England held, but she did have some military successes. In August 1557, English and Spanish soldiers captured Saint Quentin in a battle that saw 3,000 French soldiers killed and 7,000 captured including the Constable of France, so she knew how to lead an army and who to place in charge in the right positions. As she is known for her brutal side, Mary I surprisingly did at first spare Lady Jane Grey, her cousin, and the woman she forced off the throne. Lady Jane was a Protestant, but the Tower of London became her place of imprisonment during Mary's reign. The Queen, to begin with, would allow Jane comforts inside the Tower, but as the threat of Protestant revolts rose, Jane was seen as a threat and a danger to Mary. Because of this, on the 12th of February 1554, Mary I would have Lady Jane Grey executed by an axe. Jane was executed inside of the Tower of London, and she was around 16 years old when this happened. She made a speech to the crowd before she lost her head, but then as she lay on her head on the block, with the blindfold around her eyes, she lost her calm and panicked, looking for the block. But when the axe fell, in one swift, clean stroke, she was executed. Jane today is still buried inside of the Tower of London, and she is remembered as one of the first victims of Bloody Mary. The fact that Mary I is most remembered for is that she burned over 200 people at the stake for her brutality. It's believed specifically that 284 people were burned in front of large crowds in cities and towns across England. These people were burned because of Mary's religious rules and laws, and she would in her life believe that she was doing the work of God in punishing heretics. She took inspiration from her husband's laws in Spain, in which people had been burned during the Spanish Inquisition. But some of these burnings were harrowing, and many were burned at the same time on the same fire. There are even accounts of a pregnant woman being burned on the fire because of Mary's rules. Burning was a harrowing way to be executed. It often took a long time for someone to die, and it was not quick. And the purpose of this was to make people think twice about having religious beliefs which were different from the Queen's.
One thing to consider is also that the title of Bloody Mary is not the most accurate. This is because her father Henry VIII executed around 70,000 people in his kingdom and her half-sister and successor Elizabeth I would execute many more people too. But why don't we refer to these rulers as bloody? The belief is that the term bloody is used to describe Mary as it was made by her enemies and by Protestants who wanted to tarnish her legacy as a queen and they wanted to ensure she was not remembered as a good monarch. Also there is a belief that she had this title because of the fact she is a woman and the first queen to rule in her own right. One of the most tragic parts of Mary's life was her inability to have a child and a successor. She was married to Philip II of Spain, and she wanted to have a son or daughter to continue her Catholic dynasty on the throne. Mary was known for having a number of phantom pregnancies, and which caused her a significant amount of distress. To F1 in 1555, it looked as if Mary would give birth as her stomach swelled, and many believed a son or daughter would be born to the Catholic Queen. However, in July 1555, her abdomen receded, and with this, many dismissed the pregnancy as wind or an illness. But the Queen was heartbroken by this phantom or false pregnancy, and she grieved as she believed she was being punished for allowing heretics inside her land, and following this she ramped up the burnings and persecutions of Protestants. Throughout her early life and queenship, Mary I was a very ill woman. She suffered with many different problems, but was greatly afflicted with problems involving her menstruation and also stomach. The queen's stomach would swell, and she would complain of terrible pains in her abdomen region at times, and many people believed throughout her life she would die much sooner than she did. This has led many to believe that she suffered from a much serious condition that would lead to her death. In May 1558, Mary was very weak, and she was in a lot of pain, possibly from ovarian cysts or uterine cancer and she died on the 17th of November 1557 inside of St James's Palace at the age of 42 during a flu epidemic that was sweeping through the nation. But one of the most shocking things involving Mary I was that following her funeral and death in the years and decades after she would actually be buried directly under her half-sister Elizabeth I. Following Elizabeth's death in 1603 the successor James I would organise a huge tomb to be made for Elizabeth inside of Westminster Abbey, but he would then organise for Mary's coffin to be placed below her sisters to symbolise that Elizabeth was superior in every way to her half sister Mary. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.